Hello, welcome. So, we're going to discuss uh, The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. If you haven't read it yet, please check out my other video. It's called Should You Read The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, that's my recommendations for it. So this one we're going to talk about it. There might be spoilers, uh, but really I'm just going to talk about anarchism capitalism from a Buddhist perspective. So uh, I, I would people have labelled me as a Buddhist. I would not give myself that label, but I do try to follow the principles of the Buddha because they, I think that spreading peace in this world is the best thing to do. Peace and compassion for all human beings that share this world. So I'm going to analyse the book from that position. But I'm only going to try and make this video 10 minutes. I'm not going to go full discussion because you're not here in front of me so we can't have uh, a dialogue. It's going to be a monologue. And I'm going to start from this place which is the place in the book where I think it's Vey um, asks Shervek to uh, say what he really thinks about Anaris uh, and Ures. And if you remember that, Shervek is drunk at this point in the book and he responds, and, and here it is, so about Anaris. No, it is not wonderful. It's an ugly world, not like this one. And Naris is all dusty and dry hills, all meagre, all dry. And the people aren't beautiful. They have big hands and feet like me and the waiter there, but not big bellies. They get very dirty and take baths together. Nobody here does that. The towns are very small and dull. They're dreary, no palaces. Life is dull and hard work. You can't always have what you want or even what you need because there isn't enough. You, Eurysty, have enough. Enough air, enough rain, grass, oceans, food, music, buildings, factories, machines, books, clothes, history. You are rich, you own. We are poor, we lack, you have, we do not have. Everything is beautiful here, only not the faces. On Anaris, nothing is beautiful, nothing but the faces. The other faces, the men and women. We have nothing but that, nothing but each other. Here you see the jewels, there you see the eyes. And in the eyes you see the splendour, the splendour of the human spirit. Because our men and women are free, possessing nothing, they are free, and you, the possessors, are possessed. You are in jail, each alone, solitary, with a heap of what he owns. You live in prison, die in prison. It is all I can see in your eyes, the wall, the wall. So, that's a really nice paragraph. Um, at the beginning of the book, it seems like Shevek is really enjoying the capitalist society because they have so much. They have so many things, so many wonderful things, and the, the city looks amazing, all these beautiful sights, whereas his homeland, Anaris, is obviously, as he said, dull and dreary and barren, and there's nothing there. Um, however, in this point, you see his real opinion come out, which is that even though in Uras they have all of these wonderful things, People are they people have built themselves into their own prison. Um, they're selfish. They don't treat each other re with any respect. They use each other. They try and manipulate each other to gain status. There's a war going on. Later in the book, when they start shooting people, and Ursula uh, so Le Guin uses the metal rain. People were trying to take shelter from metal rain when helicopters are shooting bullets down onto the um, onto the poor people in. Um, the outskirts of the neo society. So, yeah, it's a great comment on this capitalist society. Certainly, it's like we do live in this world where you know people try to buy, 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 buy all of these things to make themselves happy because when they buy, they feel this. Oh, I'm happy now, but the happiness fades. And um, the buying doesn't make them happy. What it does is just they build up this collection of material goods. And this is not what's going to find you happiness. Because actually, by building up this collection of goods, they then need to build security around themselves. And the security that they build around themselves is the wall that blocks other people out. So they build themselves into their own prison cells. And then another thing would be advertisements. 
So advertisements, the capitalist system obviously forces advertisements out because everybody's trying to gain status, produce products, sell their products to other people. And um, you have to advertise that to really have these really like, hey, look, I've got a new car, isn't it amazing? I'm so happy. Look at my super hot girlfriend that's with me and we've got this family. We're all really happy. Uh, which is what you get on... TV and it's ridiculous and then you go oh I should buy that because I'm going to be happy and have all those things and it's not true because real happiness is coming from within it's the internal trying to find peace within yourself you know get past all of the anger that you might have because of the way that you see the world and you go oh that makes me angry that makes me angry it's sort of, no come to that peace that's already naturally within you and then learn how to transmit that peace out into the world and that's what's going to make you happy it's not the trying to gain 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 and so here on this anarchistic anarchist society of Nowadays, we have that. We have the people who have nothing. They live in a state of lack on this barren land where there's nothing there. There's only humans, and all they have is each other. But they're all free. They all help each other. They all respect each other. There's no titles. No one's a doctor. No one's a sir. They all call each other by their first name. They're on the same platform because we're all humans. And so... I think that that in general fits into a Buddhist perspective because we see that everybody has value as a life uh, and, and everybody has compassion for other human beings. And the anarchistic society spreads those values and ideas and that's why I would stand with it against the capitalist society that spreads just selfishness and the selfishness brings about misery and suffering. Um, but saying that, you know, could I live in a world where there was absolutely nothing because I like to write and a laptop gives me that. Uh, so I need a laptop and doing YouTube videos, I need a phone. So could I live... You know, where Shevet goes into his room with his wife and all there is is a bed and an orange blanket. Nothing else. Um, so obviously, you know, a capitalist society has appeal in the fact that we can have nice things. Where, but, but I think that a capitalist society takes that too damn far. Where people start saying, you can have happiness if you buy this. Like Coca-Cola. Open happiness. <laughs> Come on, guys. Really? This is what a capitalist society gives you. Gives you a company which advertises a fizzy drink that's incredibly bad for your body. With the phrase, open happiness. As if to say that happiness was inside the bottle of Coke. It's the sickest way of advertising a product there ever is. Because the happiness is the internal peace that is already naturally within you. So to lie and say that that's in a product, it's just abysmal. Abysmal. Um, so, yeah, I think this this is a great book to uh, you know be discussing whether a capitalist system is actually beneficial for the. For, for a person, and I don't think it is, but do I think an anarchist society is any better? No, because I would like to have products and I would like to have things. I need these glasses, I need this shirt, um, I, I need food to eat. And an anarchist society does offer ways of doing that, but yeah, the problems that it comes with, which we see in the book just not good either so I wonder if what I would what I what I what I my take from reading this book would be to start wondering what a Buddhist utopia would be like and I think that going to um, an ashram or a meditation center would enable me to see that and it's something that I would quite like to do to see how that might operate um, 
unfortunately we live in a time where there's coronavirus and uh, we can't do those things but hopefully when this virus lifts I will be able to go to a Buddhist society a retreat for 10 days and do the silent meditation and uh, maybe even go to an ashram in India if there's that possibility to definitely examine Buddhism a bit more and see if a Buddhist society would um, be more beneficial than a capitalist society or even an anarchist society. So that's my take from the book. Um, yes, please leave your comments below. Tell me what you thought about my ideas. Tell me your thoughts on Buddhism, anarchism, capitalism, socialism, communism, all of the isms. And uh, let's try to make this world a better place with more compassion. Thanks.